So how would the one atom at a time technique work here? Well, these are all the things the nitrogen is attached to. And now what's the number seven attached to? Six. Is it attached to anything else? S, but the bond is broken. Yeah, so no, it's not attached to anything else because we're breaking this bond. Nothing else except the hidden hydrogens, which we don't need to draw. And is there anything else the number four is attached to? F. All right, so again, this is what I mean by the one atom at a time technique. Just take your time and consciously ask yourself, what are all the things that this atom is attached to? It's maybe a good idea to go through and do the whole problem twice that way, because it's easy to leave something out the first time. It's much harder to do that if you don't put in numbers. If you put in numbers, then you can specifically refer to each atom by number. Now we can go back to over here. What's all the things that the sulfur will be attached to? It will be attached to 10, 8, 8 and a set of lone pairs. That's right, which we don't need to worry about because we're not going to draw the lone pairs. Okay, it's not going to be attached to the 7 anymore because that's what this arrow told us. We're breaking this bond. Who's the 10 attached to? 11 and 12. And the 11 is attached to the 12, and the 8 is attached to? The 9. Okay, so again, that's what I mean by the one atom at a time technique. Again, the alternative to that, which messes students up, is the trying to draw it in one fell swoop technique. Well, that's when people make mistakes. When they just draw the whole thing, then it's very easy to lose track of stuff. So take your time. All right, and it was very good that you thought about, th thought about the charges here. The nitrogen was at the initial tail. It started neutral, and it lost electrons, so it became positive. And the sulfur was at the final head. It started positive, and it gained electrons, so it became neutral. No need to check the formal charges using chemistry skills. The arrows tell us what's going to happen. We had a positive one net charge in the starting materials, and a positive one net charge in the products. One thing that you did really good here, a lot of students here would have detached the nitrogen from the three and the four. A lot of students here would just move the nitrogen onto the seven. Um, but remember, we only break bonds if an arrow tells us to break the bonds. So it was really good that you didn't just move the nitrogen over here, but you brought the three and the four along with it. The best thing to do is don't think of this arrow as telling you to move the nitrogen. Just think of it as telling you which bonds to break and which bonds to form. Well, this is just telling us to form a bond between the nitrogen and the number seven. It didn't tell us to break any bonds. So there's no reason to break these two bonds here. We can only break these bonds if they were at the tail of an arrow. OK, well, um, chemists think it's really cool that you can take a reaction that's complicated like this that you've never seen before and get the right products if you just obey the arrows. So you just have to take your time and trust the arrows, work step by step, and you can draw the, the correct products with the correct charges even if you've never seen that reaction before. Okay. Let's try drawing the product here. Oh, I left something out. Should put this number in. So let's try drawing this product.
Is the arrow pointing at the H or at the carbon? Which oh, is it? oh no, it's just an H, right? Right. Okay. Okay, so I was going to criticize you for not putting in some numbers, but then you put in some numbers, so that was good. For a second, you tried to put a number in over here, but then you realized that this wasn't a carbon. Again, for some reason, bond line notation tends to confuse people a lot. Um, this is a carbon, but this is just a hydrogen, so um, let's not fool ourselves into thinking this is a carbon. So, this is, uh, so there's no carbon here, just the hydrogen. All right, now I like that you put some numbers in here as well but they should be different numbers because these are not the same carbons. So if you used up the five numbers here, you should be, you start with the number six. So let's go ahead and put in some numbers over here starting with the number six. Okay, so you started with this picture. Now I think if you look at the board, you'll see that you actually miscopied this. Do you see how what you have uh, here is different than what I have on the board? better. Okay. So you decided to write this out, which was fine. Although, you know, in this case, um, there are no arrows over here. So there's no bonds being broken. You would have been less likely to make a mistake if we just left well enough alone over here. So I'm just going to leave this the way it is. Uh, I'm just going to call this carbon number six. I'm not even going to bother numbering these because I'm not going to be doing anything with them. So who's carbon number six going to be attached to? Oxygen. Who else? The three methylers. Yeah. We might as well just keep writing it like this. In this particular problem, there's no need to uncondense this. All right, who's the oxygen going to be attached to? The hydrogen. Good. And then over here, you've got one is attached to two. You saw that two will now be double bonded to three. Three is attached to four. Ah, and you saw that the iodine would now be off by itself. Good. This is at the final head. Since it started neutral, it's becoming negative. Great. This was at the initial tail. And since it started negative, it lost electrons to become neutral. And the charge balances, because we had a negative one initial charge and a negative one final charge. Have you heard the term cis and trans yet in class? Mm -hmm. All right, I just wanted to point out, we can't really tell yet whether this should be cis or trans. You could have drawn this either cis or trans. You won't be able to figure that out until later in the course. So we don't need to worry about that now. These arrows don't tell us that whether this is cis or trans. They just tell us who's connected to whom. All right, so we know who's connected to who here. All right, um, I mentioned a second ago that one of the most common ways students lose points is by adding or dropping carbons. And you can see how that happened to you this over here. Even though you put in the numbers, we were still adding uh, a carbon there. Um, but this is just one more argument for always putting in numbers because it makes you less likely to add or drop carbons. Um, and if there's a part of the co uh, compound that is condensed notation, we only need to uncondense it if it's participating in the reaction. Otherwise, it's actually more convenient just to leave it like this. 
All right. Um, so this all worked out. This is the first time that we formed a pi bond. That didn't give you any trouble, so that's good. 